What up, everybody? This is Jonathan Evans. And listen, I'm so excited because today we're in the marriage, we're in the relationships, we're talking about submission. Let's get into it. Listen to me now. We are all called to submit. Ephesians 5.21 says, submit one to another. And God gives an order in the marriage covenant. In 1 Corinthians 11, he says, God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of every man. Every man is the head of a singular woman. Make sure you understand that. It's singular, not just all humanity, not plural. It's singular because he has a covenantal order. He says in Ephesians 5, that husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. He puts the husband in the Christ position. He puts the wife in the church position. And he's saying, this is how my covenant flows so that you can experience the purpose of your marriage so that you can experience the positive outcomes. And we have to understand how that submission works. But it starts with the man because he says, Christ is the head of every man. And a lot of men wanna be out of alignment with God and they wanna get their women in alignment with them. And that's the problem. Men want women to submit to them while they submit to no one. We got to understand what headship is. If we're supposed to be the head of our households, if we're supposed to be the head who, who God has called us to be, then you're looking at the submission of the one who is on top of you, which is Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 11, it says, Christ is the head of every man. So Christ is how you is who you look to, to determine how to be the head of your household. You don't look to your history. You don't look to what you learned. You don't look to what the culture teaches. You look at Jesus Christ to determine how to be the man in your house. And Jesus tells us how he is the man, how he was the head through how he lived his life. He submitted himself to the will of God. So first of all, as a man who's the head of your household, are you submitted first? Are you submitted as the head of your household? Are you, is it obvious that you're submitted to the God's ways, God's will, and not your way and your will? Is it obvious that you're leading your family to church? Is it obvious that you're sanctifying your family, that you're serving your family, that you're sacrificing for your family? Why do I use those S's when I talk about a man and his headship? I thought a man was supposed to be domineering. I thought a man was supposed to uh, assert his authority. I thought a man was supposed to show that he's the head of the household. No, a man that's secure as the head looks at Jesus to determine his headship. And it says in Mark 10 that Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so if you're the head of your household, I remember when I was getting married, I remember when I was getting married, my dad said, um, so you're the head of your household, right? I said, that's, that's what I plan on being. I plan on being the head of my household. That's what I plan on being. He said, okay, well, since Jesus was a servant, that lets me know what headship looks like. And he said, so if your wife's list of service to you is greater than your list of service to her, then she's leading you and you're not leading her. I said, Ooh, this is going to be harder than I thought <laughs> because there's something when it comes to following Jesus that we misrepresent as men. We don't understand that headship is found in servanthood, that Jesus, the king, was the one who was washing the feet. Jesus, the king, was the one who was serving and giving his life for the well-being of others. The question is, is your household flourishing through your servanthood? The question is, are you seen as the servant of the house who not only serves outside of the house, but comes home in the house with a posture that I wanna serve, why? Because I'm submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I've submitted my life to his will, his way, how he lived his life and not how I was taught by culture or even by my parents or even by um, um, so the, the disillusioned situations that I've come from in my life. So first is servanthood. And then for the man, it's sacrifice. Are you willing to sacrifice for your wife and your loved one? Jesus sacrificed his life. He said, love your wife like Christ loved the church in Ephesians 5. And the last time I checked, he loved the church to death. He was willing to give himself up for her. And so the question is, how much are you willing to give up to see your wife flourish? The question is, how much are you willing to sacrifice and lay down uh, your life in order for her, her to be able to flourish in the garden that God has given you both to rule. So you look at servanthood, you look at sacrifice. And I know a lot of men are listening to this right now. Somebody, man, this is getting real low, real fast. I don't really like where this is going, but it's going in the direction of Jesus Christ. This is a man 
who's submitting his life to Jesus Christ and the way Christ lived his life and how Christ lived his life is full submission to God the Father. Are you seeing how this flows? In 1 Corinthians 11, it says, God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of every man. Every man is the head of a singular woman. So as men who are submitting our lives to Jesus Christ, who wanna see the outcomes of this marriage, it comes through the covenantal flow and order that God has set up. He says, Jesus was a servant. Jesus sacrificed for our well-being. The man is called to give up his life literally if the situation calls for itself. What if an intruder came into your house and uh, you know you looked at your wife and said, hey, it's your turn. I'm gonna go hide in the back of the closet. You go handle this one. Boy, she would slap you because it is already embedded that you are the protector of the house physically, but not only physically, spiritually. So servanthood, sacrifice, and then sanctify. Ephesians 5.25 says, washing her with the word, okay? It's calling you as the man to be the pastor of your house. As Jesus was the pastor through the parables and talking to the disciples and, and speaking to the crowd and even giving scathing words to the Pharisees, he was letting people know and pastoring people through his word and through his life. So as a man, you're submitting your life to Jesus Christ in servanthood. You're submitting your life to Jesus Christ in sacrifice. This is how you come home. You're submitting your life to Jesus Christ and being the pastor of your home. You say, Jonathan, bro, I ain't no pastor. Now, that's not what I do. That may be what you do. That may be what Tony Evans does, but that's not what I do. I, I'm not a pastor. Um, yes, you are. Let me help you understand. Love your wife like Christ loved the church. We look at Christ to determine by his example and by his word, how we live and how we function. And so if things are going haywire in the house, it may be because there's a haywire pastor in the pulpit. We got to understand that you are the pastor of your house. Now, let me give you something practical that you can do as the man of your house, because you may not be a pastor by vocation, but, but you're a pastor based on God's word. And so if you lead your family to church every Sunday, which men got to get up out of bed, uh, if your wife and children have to ask you if we go into church today, then you're not being the spiritual leader of your home. The least you can do is say, hey, we're going to church so that we can get this word, so that we can be a part of God's community. And you're leading in that effort, not lazy, not procrastinating, but leading as the people and the disciples were following Jesus. So your family should be following you. You see, we see what I'm doing here? I'm submitting to Jesus Christ as the man and letting him teach me how to serve, sacrifice and sanctify, which is the pastor. Watch this. You go to church, you listen to the pastor, you take notes, you take the notes that the pastor just said and around the dinner table or around your den, you review those notes with your family. See, Tony Evans does the work for you. When I go study and I give a sermon on Sunday, we, we've done all the deep study for you. All you have to do is be intentional to listen, take down the notes and be the one who says, you know what? Let me review this with my family at dinner. Let me review this with my family in the den. Let me review this with my family while we play board games and while we have family time because I'm called to do what Jesus did. And as I submit to Jesus, I'm gonna serve my family. I'm gonna sacrifice for my wife and my family. And I'm gonna pastor and sanctify my wife and my family. Now, this doesn't mean that the woman needs the husband in order to be saved. That's on Jesus. This is just calling men to responsibility is what it's saying in Ephesians 5. So the men are called to submit first, serve, sacrifice, and sanctify. But then there's also mutual submission, okay? You got three S's, serve, sacrifice, and sanctify. But let's talk about mutual submission. Ephesians 5.21 says, submit one to another. Ah, so now the men is also called to submit to his wife. There are times where you have to be humble enough to say, oh no, you're right. You have to be humble enough to say, that's a much better idea than I had as far as our direction. You have to be humble enough to say that what you're thinking is much better than what I thought. You have to be humble enough to recognize the helpmate that God has put in your life. See, most men aren't humble enough to engage in mutual submission. But God gave you a suitable helpmate. He gave you someone um, in Genesis 2 that he says, the helper. Now, let me help you understand this helper. This helper is not a maid. This helper is not someone who's just supposed to do stuff for you or be your personal assistant. This helper 
The word helper there is the same word used to describe the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. This is a monster word. It means easier connigdo, which is essential collaborator. This helper is someone who comes alongside to make the garden flourish at a higher level than it would have if Adam would have been left alone. Why would God give Adam a helper unless Adam needed help? See, you have to be humble enough to recognize that you need help. You have to be humble enough to recognize that this woman is here to take our whole garden higher than it could have been if it was just me by myself. You have to be humble enough to say that her idea was better than my idea. This is one thing that I work on in my marriage. In my marriage, I work on all the time listening to Kanika intently because if God gave me Kanika, that means I needed Kanika's help. And so I'm not submitting to God if I will not listen to my wife. I'm not submitting to God if I don't realize that my wife is essential to make the right decisions as a part of this marriage. Now, let me help you understand something about a helper to all of the men. If I go get help from somebody, if I go to counseling or let's say I'm taking calculus and I need help, Let's say um, I, need to, I need a life coach, so I need help. Do you go get help from somebody who knows more than you on the subject? Or do you go get help from somebody who knows less than you on the subject? I'll wait. Exactly. You get help from someone who knows more than you on the subject that you need help with. Sometimes your wife knows more than you. Sometimes your wife is better versed than you in certain things than, than you are. Sometimes you need to recognize that this is her lane. And if it's a decision that's really in your wife's lane, the Bible says submit one to another, that it's the calling also for the man as he submits to Christ to recognize the creation of the woman in the marriage. And once you recognize that, you're humble enough for mutual submission. Once you recognize that, you're humble enough to sacrifice. Once you recognize that, you're humble enough to serve. Once you recognize that, you're humble enough to say, let me lead my family as Christ is leading me and take these notes so I can be the sanctifier, wash them with the word that God is calling me to do. And once you understand submission in that way, you understand how to lead as a submitted servant as Jesus did, so that it's easy for your wife to submit to you. Because there is no question that the Bible not only calls the man to submit, there's no question that the Bible also calls the woman to submit. As he gives the order in 1 Corinthians 11, he says, God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of every man, and every man is the head of a singular woman, the one that you're married to. Now, I want all the women to understand this. This is not an ordered passage as it relates to um, humanity and whether it's equality. This has nothing to do with equality. This has to do with functionality. This is how the covenant flows. And so Ephesians 5.24 says, but as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wife ought to be to their own husbands. Colossians 3.18 says, Wives, be subject to your husbands as fitting to the Lord. Titus 2.5 says, Subject, be subject to your own husbands so that the word of God will not be dishonored. So now that I'm talking to the men, let me say a little bit to the women here, that God is obviously calling us as men and you as women in a marriage situation to be subject to your husbands who are subject to Jesus Christ. There is a chain of command that has been given and to not be submitted to your husband, it says is to dishonor God because God has, cre has created an order and he says it's dishonorable to God to not be submitted to your husband. And I know a lot of women have a hard time with this. They are like, I don't understand this. Why, why would I do that? You just said I know more than him on these subjects. Well, it has nothing to do with what you know. It has to do with the position of God's covenant that he wants things to flow. Let me tell it to you this way. If an 18 wheeler is getting on the highway and a dune buggy is already on the highway. So 18 wheeler is getting on a uh, Volkswagen is already on the highway. Which one has to yield? Based, based on laws, not based on what you feel. Volkswagen's already on it. 18-wheeler is getting on. The 18-wheeler is called to yield. Its size doesn't matter. Its size is irrelevant. How smart you are 
all the accolades you got, all that, it don't matter. What matters is the position. God, the, the, the Volkswagen has a different position than the 18-wheeler. So even if the 18-wheeler has more training, even if the 18-wheeler got all this power and all that, based on the position, it's called to yield. And God is saying here that the woman is called to be subject to her own husbands. But this has nothing to do with equality of humanity because it says God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of every man. Every man is the head of a singular female. So let me, a uh, woman. So let me talk about it like this. Is God greater than Christ? No. Jesus is God. God emptied himself, taking on the form of a bondservant. That is kenosis. That is, that is uh, him deciding voluntarily to take on a different role in order to advance God's kingdom, even though the full deity of God resides in the person of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is equal to God, but he took on a different role in order for the purposes to be able to flow. The reason why you and I experience the salvific nature of Jesus Christ, the reason why we're able to do what we're called to do and be who we're called to be and have the righteousness of Christ is because the kingdom of God and its advancement came through God emptying himself, taking on a different form while maintaining the equality with God uh, he took on a different form in order to advance God's kingdom because of the purposes of God and that outworking in our lives that we get to experience. What am I saying? That you are equal to the man. There's no question that a woman is equal to the man. But voluntarily, based on submitting to God's word, you're taking on a different position because you know if you want to be blessed, you have to operate within the confines of God's word. And so voluntarily, just like Jesus did, let me empty myself. In other words, no longer regard equality as a thing to be grasped. I already know I'm equal. I don't need to grasp at it. I'm going to take on a different role and submit to my husband so that I'm pleasing to God. And so that's what God is calling the, the, the ladies to do and the women to do as he's calling the men to do the same thing so that in submission, success of the relationships can flow. In submission, as the husband submits and the woman submits to the husband. Now, what does that look like practically? A woman submitting to her husband. Well, if it says that he is the, the head of the household, does that mean he, he makes all of the decisions? Well, in my house, Kanika makes a lot of decisions because I recognize how intelligent she is and a lot of things she says are best. So first of all, the man has to be humble enough to know that his wife has just said something that's undeniable. And we got to go with that. We got to do that. And we work together as a team to move forward. But what if you totally disagree? What if a decision has to be made, but you're at a dead end and you can't make a decision? What if what, what if you're getting on the highway, he's coming down the highway and, and you can't figure out how to make this thing work? and you're on two opposite ends trying to figure out a decision to be made and you just can't come to agreement. You have one or two options. Number one, if it's a big deal, you can go to uh, an external source like a counselor or somebody if it's something really big to help give you guidance. But the other thing is, if it's a decision that needs to be made and you can't come to an agreement, there are times where the woman is called based on a position voluntarily, like Jesus did, to take on a different form and to say, you know what? I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God is leading you and guiding you in this decision. You have heard everything that I, all of my input. And so now I'm going to ride with you. I'm going to let you in this circumstance be the head of the household because that's who God has called you to be. If he's called you to die for me, then I can't ask you to die for me, but I'm the head of the household. It, do, it doesn't work that way. Jesus Christ died for us. And so we respond to him and we submit ourselves to him. And he's called the man to that same position. So practically speaking, when you get in those times, it's gonna be hard, but as a woman, you're called to yield to the decision-making of the man who is submitted to God. Now, if the man is out of alignment, you're called to stay in alignment with Jesus Christ. You're not called to go out of alignment if he's out of alignment. If he's not living for God, you don't therefore become carnal just because you're trying to, uh, uh, to submit to your husband because then you'll be disobedient to God. There has to be an alignment that's happening. And when Kanika knows that a decision needs to be made because she has a humble husband who's willing to recognize all of her thoughts and sometimes go with what she's thinking, it's easy for her to take a step back and say, okay, Jay, 
you know, you make this decision. We can't agree. You're the head of the household. You're responsible. God is calling you to responsibility. And so, uh, and you're the one that he's going to call Adam. Where are you? He didn't say Adam and Eve. Where are y'all? He said, Adam, where are you? So God called Adam to responsibility as the one who got the word and was created first. So since you're responsible, I'll step back, pray for you and rock with you. And you know, I got a hundred percent, you know, you have a hundred percent of my support. And when you have that team that understands they're equal, that understands both are supposed to be submitted, that understands both have a responsibility to submission and play different positions, but hang on to that equality in our humanity, then you have a team that can function, the covenant can flow and success can be realized. Listen, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord and know that it will not go in vain. It's not easy, but it's best. Submission is the key to success in your relationships. Listen, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Make sure you're a part of the channel. Make sure you're sharing this message because submission is for all of us. It's the key to our success. Let's go.